come to the CCG hour. It is really, really, really a good thing. I'm excited already. It's just good. Let me calm down to be here this morning again. Of course, it's second Friday. And, well, for those of you who have been following up with us, you must know by now that we have some new friends. We took the Grenada Red Cross right now. They, I don't want to say on national television that they don't have a choice. So I'll put it nicely. They don't have a choice in that they gave me the go-ahead. <laughs> but I do have with me, um, Samantha is here with me, the Samantha Dixon from the Red Cross. She is here with us this morning. And the reason I'm so excited, and I can't even tell her good morning yet for her to tell you good morning, is because we are following up from last month's program where we are going to actually do, well, sadly not on me, they have professional people and professional dummies for that, um, but they're actually going to demonstrate CPR and all of that. Anyhow, so let me calm down. Good morning, Samantha. Yes, well, hello and thank you. Thank you for the opportunity on behalf of the Grenada Red Cross Society again. We always appreciate any opportunities we have to educate ourselves and others. And today we are actually zeroing in on some first aid intervention. Mm -hmm. um, we hope it doesn't come to it, but that if it does, that people would be encouraged to um, perform these life saving skills on others to save lives. Thank you. Well, we are in your territory. That's the, not the other thing. We are not in the studio. I'm sure you noticed by now, hey, how does things look different? So that's because we are here at the Red Cross building. And for those of you who may not be very aware, well, where is the Red Cross building? Well, they're on Upper Locust Street. It's Upper Locust Street you call here, right? Upper Locust Street um, in St. George's. And of course, well, we'll do some advertisement and we'll tell you some other things that they use the building for that I will be very happy on their behalf that you can patronize with, but we'll talk about that a little later on. But today, we are going to be, first of all, demonstrating CPR, right? So the first skill we'll be doing is, is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. No, it's you a need long to word. Well slow. <laughs> you see why I like yes. CPR? <laughs> And Stay that's over. the reason, that's the reason we just cut it down and say CPR. Mm -hmm. So the actual meaning is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh -huh. Cardio has to do with the heart. Right. Pulmonary has to do with the lungs and oxygen and all that sort of exchanges there. Mm -hmm. And to resuscitate means to revive or to start again. You see, you make it so easy when you explain what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in short, we yes, always say CPR. CPR. It's, a, right. it's a practical language and when you say CPR, it, everybody knows everybody what knows. you're kind right. of referring so to. It's universal. It what, is when universal. you say uni um, CPR, that's, that's the term, that's it, wherever you go in the world. Yes. CPR. That, that's, that's what we know it as. CPR. All right. Okay, great. Um, and today we have, we have some individuals who will be doing that. It's, we're not getting up. Yes. No, we're sitting here. We're All enjoying right. the show. We're giving the explanations behind the scene, mm -hmm. but the cameras will uh, focus on the volunteers and the demonstrators and the mannequins and all the equipment right. that we use when we teach this skill. Okay, who is, the, who is the volunteer or member that we have dealing with us for the CPR presentation? So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our volunteer manager, actually, Mr. Richard McQueen, mm -hmm. um, who takes care of volunteer activities and he's also one of our first aid instructors. Ah. So he'll be doing the demonstration of the skills and of mm -hmm. course we'll have different actor volunteers ah. on the program later on. So I, I, it's a pity. I just can't go there and volunteer. I have to behave today. I will. I only will. for the, only for the program. <laughs> <laughs> but I will certainly be, I have to sign up because we may have to talk to the people about um, these skills that we are going to be demonstrating. Is it that we're saying to people, hey, well, you know, just, you can go right ahead or do you have to be trained for this? Right. So an excellent question. And um, obviously, we always see demonstration of these skills, whether it's in the movies, whether it's on mm -hmm. YouTube, you know, wherever. But is it, it is important that we um, emphasize the importance of physically going, taking a class. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when Richard is demonstrating, we'll be talking through some things that has to happen. Right. And it's easier said than done. You mm -hmm. look at it, it's not like you can, let's say, look at the, the TV, follow the, maybe you can when you're baking a cake, it might be different. Yeah, but with yeah. CPR, there's particular places you have to put your hand, mm -hmm. um, there's particular rates you have to press, there's particular speeds you have to press at. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of intricacies that you really go to the class, you get it done properly, mm -hmm. and then you leave the class feeling confident that you that can you do can these do skills. Yeah. All right, great. So let's bring yes. on Mr. McQueen. Yes. All right, great. So what we have here um, mm -hmm. is a scenario uh, where a patient or somebody uh, 
experiences some kind of injury mm -hmm. and that injury causes them to collapse. So for demonstration, mm -hmm. we do that on a mannequin right. because if somebody is healthy and breathing, there's then there is no can't need be doing for that. It exactly. has to be real CPR. Right. And we do CPR on someone who does not have a pulse and who's not breathing. So to the layman, they may consider that person unresponsive or even dead. In their mind, they might be thinking that. But it doesn't mean that they're dead. It doesn't mean that, uh -huh. they, that they have died. Yeah. So let, but let me just get that clear. I'm, I'm going to say it in layman's term because you know what you're doing. Somebody is there, like this mannequin guy, so he's lying there, he's collapsed, you call it. So the person is collapsed there, he doesn't have a pulse. Right. If the person had a pulse but is unresponsive, can you have a pulse and still be unresponsive? That, that's yes. Okay, so, great. You, so there's mm -hmm. a number of scenarios we can discuss. Ah. Um, so CPR is actually done on a casualty who's unresponsive, mm -hmm. they have no pulse, and they're not breathing. Ah. So that is kind of like the critical situation and um, that is the, the, the sort of scenario where it's going to get the worst so to speak in emergency right and so that if CPR is not done the clock is ticking mm -hmm. and that we'll find out that from the point somebody collapses they have a few minutes within which they're still clinically alive but to the naked eye they might seem motionless mm -hmm. and that is when their body is using up the residual oxygen their heart is probably still uh, pumping to, and it's getting on the verge of collapsing ah, and stopping right. and it is at that point when it stops mm -hmm. that you intervene with CPR and we also have a device that we'll be using to demonstrate called the AED as well mm -hmm. and that also is a complementary support tool if you want to call it that right. to help trigger the heart back into, into action All right. and so after a couple of minutes if nothing is done to intervene to let's say trigger the heart to start back, mm -hmm. then the individual is going to start experiencing biological death, which means no, that's the death that's irreversible with science and clinical skills as we know it. Okay, okay well, let's bring on Mr. McQueen so that he can show us what to do in the event of someone who needs CPR. Great. Sure. So here we have a person who has collapsed and in CPR we use mannequins to teach this skill. Mm -hmm. The responder is on the scene. So He's looking for face movement, any kind of movement. Mm -hmm. He's checking to see if this person is breathing. There's a number of things you can do. Look at the chest, listen over the ears. Okay. Nothing's happening. So then you notice he's getting out some uh, equipment now. He's going to put on his gloves. Mm -hmm. And so, again, importantly, when we think about first aid and the prevention of disease transmission, we teach mm -hmm. donning and doffing of gloves. Especially now with COVID and all of the other things that can happen. Well, that day. has made it additional. Um, but, yeah. but from, yeah, from the always time we've been teaching this, we always teach uh, disease prevention. And okay. so having uh, gloves, having a face shield, mm -hmm. um, your pocket mask, it depends on what device you've trained to use mm -hmm. um, because you have different types. So today we're using a face shield in, in this demonstration, mm -hmm. but you have other bits of... Uh, the device. Okay, so yeah. So he has checked that the patient is unresponsive and mm. not breathing. So he's doing now what we call chest compressions. Okay. And that, like I said, we're not going to talk about, well, in order to understand what's going on, you have to be in the class. We help you get the hand position correctly, mm. the rate correctly, the depth correctly. Mm. He's doing a particular number of compressions mm. and then he's going to put the face shield on and give a number of breaths. So we're not yeah. actually going into those particular numbers yeah, because yeah. we want That's it to be just thing. education yeah. for now, mm -hmm. but we want people to be encouraged to attend the classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's given breaths and you'll notice the chest rises mm -hmm. and there are particular situations when the chest do not rise and then there's things you'd have to do. So for example, if the chest doesn't rise, you have to make certain assumptions mm -hmm. and you have to reposition the head and attempt giving breaths again. Okay. And then if it still doesn't go in, you assume that the airway is blocked. Wow. And so every time you've given the compressions, you check them out to see if there's anything in there mm -hmm. and then you take it off. So we're going to pause he, on he, that just, skill. Mm -hmm. There may be some more things you want to ask about the yes, skill. Yes, I was just about to ask. I noticed that um, he's kind of leaning back the head. Right. Is that, that, yes. that is a, a, something that you have to do? What, what's going on? Yes, there? so that's something mm -hmm. that you have to do, and there's some considerations with that as well. So when you're giving breaths to an unresponsive casualty, you have to do what we call the head tilt chin lift. 
-hmm. And so there's a particular position you put uh, both hands, two fingers of one hand goes underneath the chin, one hand goes uh, over the forehead, and then you tilt the head back. Okay, so All can, right? you, can you just yes, do that yes, part of it? Uh -huh. So you want to demonstrate the head, the head tilt, tilt chin length. Mm -hmm. So one hand on the forehead, two fingers under the chin. And then two fingers of the hand on the forehead, you'll notice, it goes to pinch the nose right. while he puts his oh, mouth so over all and then gives so the yeah, breath. So definitely that needs some skill in being able to do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so the reason you have to pinch the nose is that if, imagine if you're blowing into the mouth and you, you haven't pinched the nose, so the air mm. that you're breathing in is going oh, to air right go back, back through up. the nose. So you want, when you pinch the nose, then it blocks the air, it goes down into, into the lungs. Okay. Now if you blow too hard, the, ex uh -huh. the excess air goes into the stomach and that's a no-no. So again, when you come to the classes, we, we try to take you through what it feels like to breathe and how hard to breathe. It's over one second. And as soon as you see chest rise, you should stop blowing because you're not like blowing a balloon. So there's some science things in there that we have to teach you when you're in the classes and make mm -hmm. sure that you mm -hmm. get it right. And, and the, the intention of the classes, of course, is to build confidence so that if you get out there in the real environment with people watching and people with their cameras out yeah, and you're yeah. against all the forces mm -hmm, of nature, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have to have confidence that you can do this on someone who needs it when the time comes. So, I'm, of course, he has the face shield and he has all of his fancy little kit, but life happens. So, what do you do when you see or if you see an unresponsive person, maybe you did go to class and maybe you did all of that, but I'm thinking that you don't walk around, you know, right. with your whole <laughs> Red Cross kit bag yeah. thingy with you. So, so what, what do you suggest in a, in a case like right. that? Right. So again, um, you know, a lot of people drive uh -huh. and a lot of us have a little pocket book or a, po a pocket where we can carry little stuff. So the very minimal things we ask responders to walk with is maybe a face shield and a pair of gloves. Okay. Um, and to keep it in a safe place so that it's not damaged when they actually need it. Ah. Um, but of course, we do not walk around with these things. And if, for example, you're in a scenario where somebody needs CPR mm -hmm. and you don't have a face shield and you feel uncomfortable about putting your mouth on their mouth, mm -hmm. we have some good news. The good news is that um, you can do what we call hands-only CPR, mm -hmm. which means you start doing compressions on the chest, where mm -hmm. the same which position is what did before, Richard was right. doing before, mm -hmm. but then the number of compression increases. Ah. And then you'll be doing these compressions for just about two minutes before stopping. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then in that two minutes, then you stop to reassess your casualty before proceeding again to another two minutes of that hands-only um, CPR. We are hoping that if somebody arrives on the scene that they bring a pocket mask in the first aid kit or like if somebody has a first aid kit in their car mm -hmm. and they stop where you're doing this thing, hopefully there's a, a pocket shield in there or a face mask or something that the responder can use um, to, give these, to give these breaths. Okay, so someone who has never been trained should not attempt this at all? Are you, or, or should you try a thing? What, right. what do you do? So, yeah. again, you ask uh, the hard questions and the right ones too. Um, the thing is, if you've not been trained, how do you know where you're putting your hand not to break a rib or a bone? How do you know how deep down you're pressing not to, to cause damage? Right. How do you know how fast you're compressing so as not to cause damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my short answer to that question would be, you if you're not yeah, trained, we would advise but you that, not to participate, like especially. You can yeah. do other things though. Mm -hmm. You can make the area safe, you can call 911 for help, um, you can call around and ask if anybody who's watching know how to do CPR. Right. So there's a number of things you can, you can do, do. Mm -hmm. but if you yourself are not trained, um, well, I, I, in my mind, I don't think if anybody's not trained, they'll probably kind not of, attempt. But, but you, well, people do behave some interesting ways in, you know, in, in, in real life situations. But yeah, I, I'm thinking of that is definitely going Right. To, and so we've seen that, you know, um, sometimes people, again, in, in the reflex to help, yes. they may do something. One of the common things that we always see, which is a no-no, is people doing these compressions on the stomach. And you see mm. me flinching because mm -hmm, we've mm -hmm. seen it even in real life videos. Right. Um, and again, persons have the concept that if they squeeze the stomach, they'll get whatever is in their out. 
and mm. that's not true. That's not true. So we'll talk about that a little more when we get yes. to choking. Okay, so we'll what's the that. next one that he has? To right. Do? So right now uh, we talked about the AED. So Richard is going to demonstrate using the AED, and the AED is an automated uh, external defibrillator. Again, oh again, long words, <laughs> but we just say AED. AED. It's automated um, because there's a simple tagline we say: one, uh, even children can use it. So the first thing you do when you get to the scene, um, you turn the machine on. We oh, normally okay. put it, you, you so can, you can get it that. on. We're going to come back to that oh, question. Sorry. Let's okay. just demonstrate okay. it and then we come right back. Okay. So you listen to the instructions. And it's telling you what to do. Okay. There's pads in there and there's a particular place you're going to put the pads as Richard's doing right now. He's following the, the instructions and he's analyzing. Do not touch the patient. Clear. Shot advised. Charging. Stay clear of the patient. Clear. Deliver shot now. Press shot deliver. Begin CPR. Uh -huh. And then he resumes the, the oh. compressor. Yeah. Interesting. So again, this machine um, complements. You, you don't walk around with it, of course. Yeah. And so these things may be on the ambulance, maybe in nearby shopping centers, in you know public buildings, schools, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. gas stations. Um, and one thing I must say is that you don't have to be afraid that you're going to shock somebody unnecessarily right. because if it does not pick up what it needs to pick up, it's not going to even charge. So ah. no matter how much times you press that it, button, nothing, will happen. nothing is going to happen unless... Because a while ago you heard the machine saying, um, shock advice. Yes. So in this scenario, it was picking up oh, something. Say whatever it is that it's that saying. It to give oh, it okay, okay, okay. So if it doesn't say that, so I'm picking it up. If I'm happy and breathing and just having fun on the ground and you put that on me, more than likely it's, it's not, not going to okay. take up that abnormal heart rhythm that right. it's looking for oh, okay. to, to deliver shock. At mm -hmm. the same time, um, during the demonstration, you heard Richard say clear a number yes. of times, and yes. that's for a particular reason. Mm -hmm. If somebody is leaning against this casualty while this thing is analyzing, it's going to pick up the heartbeat of the person oh. who's leaning against them. So that's why he said clear, right? right. So you want to get a clear um, analysis. The other thing he said clear for mm -hmm. was just before he pressed that blinking button mm -hmm. to deliver the electricity that gave the person the, the electricity, and you said they will go, you know, mm -hmm. they would uh, be jolted. Yeah. Um, so that is, again, if he presses that button, and somebody was touching that individual, mm. the electricity will flow straight from that really? individual into the other person. Could give them oh. a good burn, could really? give them a good toss. But then nothing is injured oh. themselves. So the person who is the, the casualty or the well, the person who is unresponsive, that person it cannot get. I mean, I'm looking at the typical question someone might ask. Can it hurt someone who is being, you know, that this is administered, being administered too? So the hurt that we're talking here is not the hurt that, in the, as you say, in the layman term. Yeah. This hurt, this electric, electrical shock is needed. If the heart doesn't get that, it's not going to even gonna, trigger. Right. So if I were that person lying there, I'd say shock me many times yeah. as I <laughs> want, as you, that, that thing would allow you to shock me. Right. Because it is that thing that's probably going to cause the heart to restart again. Mm. You will have scenarios that even after the shock is administered, the heart may not start, mm -hmm. and then CPR, the, the, the compression, yeah. is what's going to make the difference. So you continue. So at which point would you have to possibly give up on this? I don't want to say give up. Maybe I shouldn't put it that way, but yeah. sadly that is what it is. How would you know? Um, because like Richard here, he has to wait for medical personnel to come. Because yeah. of course, for saying as... Um, um, Kathy and last month would have made sure she made it clear to us his first response. Mm -hmm. I remember he said, I'm a good student. Yes. First response. <laughs> so we have to wait. Yes. So he's doing this thing while he's waiting on professionals to come. So at which point there should he stop? Should he wait until they come? What to do? Right. So there's a mm -hmm. number of scenarios under which you, we say you interrupt CPR. Uh -huh. One of the first ones is if the responder is exhausted. We hope that doesn't happen mm -hmm. for the person to stop. We hope that they'll continue doing this until they, the person is revived, of course, and then you stop. Another scenario is if the, the scene becomes unsafe. 
So if this scene becomes unsafe, let's suppose it, this person had collapsed from a fight or something, mm. and the responder is on the scene helping, and then suddenly, let's say the person who was fighting came back or something, oh. he'd have to get out from there because the scene is no longer safe. Or if there was some kind of explosion, unfortunately, you, you have to kind of you don't want to have two people injured when you should have had one. Oh my. Um, okay. So if the scene becomes unsafe, you can stop, or you'd have to interrupt CPR as well. Mm -hmm. You also have to interrupt CPR if you doing if you give in the shock. Right. If a doctor arrives or more qualified help arrives and you're there as a first responder, of course, you're going to give on to the other person. Mm -hmm. If the person is pronounced dead by the physician as well, it So you can pronounce them dead? No. Okay. Then. Must Make be a sure. physician, right? So good question again. Yeah. So a physician comes to the scene, um, does his or her checks and says this person is lifeless. Mm -hmm. then as a first responder you you have to, you stop. Have to stop so there's okay. situations under which you stop we mm -hmm. hope we hope all we we, we 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 do this for is to have revival um and that's why you have to intervene as quickly and as soon as you've seen something and it has happened mm -hmm. but there are scenarios when cpr would not work it depends on the severity of the injury it dep depends on other factors um in the scenario okay all right, so that's basically it for the CPR thing. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. McQueen. Um, we are going to take a quick break, and we are going to be back. When we come back, we are going to be looking at choking, how yes. to deal with choking in the event of choking. And my goodness, we have that happening at home. We have it just happening. I mean, we eat every day. Yes. <laughs> so there right. is the possibility of choking. So when we come back from the break, we are going to be dealing with that. Just stay with us. Do what you have to do quick, quick, and come back because we wouldn't be away for long. You are my strength. Strength like no Every session of the Second Vatican Council began with the prayer, Ad Sumus Sancte Spiritus. The first word of the Latin original meaning, We stand before you, Holy Spirit, which has been historically used at councils, synods, and other church gatherings for hundreds of years, being attributed to St. Isidore of Seville. As we are called to embrace this synodal path of the Synod 2021 to 2023, this prayer invites the Holy Spirit to operate within us so that we may be a community and a people of grace. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us make yourself at home in our hearts teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it we are weak and sinful do not let us promote disorder do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path no partiality influence our actions let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from what is truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time. In communion of the Father and the Son. Forever and ever. Amen. much for staying with us. I hope that you didn't put the pot in a place where you know you need to come and check it again, load on the fire and so forth because there's a lot of action coming up right about now. So we are going to be demonstrating how to deal with someone who has choked and we've seen this thing on TV so many times. Please, um, we want to pay particular attention but again we are not saying that because we're demonstrating these things that we're saying to you, go and practice it at home. We want you to come to the classes that the Red, Grenada Red Cross is having, all right? But 
Mr. McQueen, and what is the other volunteer's name? Yes, so our volunteer today is Donville, and he'll be demonstrating, well, he'll be the, the casualty, yes. who is conscious <laughs> and choking, right. and obviously all those prevention things that we learn, cut your food small, don't talk when you have food in your mouth, chew your food properly before swallowing, be careful of the things that you consume in terms of size, all those things actually come, they, they have a reason. Um, because choking is a phenomenon that happens, and if it does, and you do not get relieved, it could turn into a fatality. So okay. we don't want that happening. Quick question before they show it. When we say choking, it means that there is something lodged, or the little cough we cough when you say, oh God, something go down in the wrong throat. Which one, what is really choking? Right, so mm -hmm. choking is when you have an obstruction. Right. Um, if somebody's coughing, and mm -hmm. uh, they're moving and about, saying, yes. they're partially they, they, they have a partially blocked airway. If they're not right, in but the you can't really call it choking. choking. Okay, right. fair enough. I, I because they still have air that. going through. And then when we talk about things going down, what we call the wrong the throat, rhino, right? it <laughs> meant that you were probably talking and a piece of food actually went into your windpipe right. versus going down into your stomach. And then, of course, it meets up with oxygen in there. has mm -hmm. to be literally burnt. Um, mm. and passed out. And you do feel the burning effect of yes, all that. Yes, you do. Oh, yes. so that is what that yes. is. That is oh. what that phenomenon is. Hmm. Yes. Interesting. Okay, good. Thanks for that. So, um, the Donville... Yes, the Donville is choking, and one of the ways that you know that somebody's choking, they, they clutch both of their hands to their throat, it's called the universal sign for choking. Really? If you see that any time, obviously, the person just reflexively holds their throat Hold, to think right. that they can take that thing out. Mm. But it won't come out, so that's when the first responder has to, to do come. something or else it can turn okay. into a serious situation. All right, so, All right, so mm -hmm. responder Richard is on the scene today again. He mm -hmm. ensures that the scene is safe mm -hmm. and then he gets up to his, uh, the person who's choking mm -hmm. and um, he's going to ask some questions. Sir, I see you're choking. I'm going to ask you a question. Would you like to help you? Okay, continue coughing. In that process, you will have to remove the oxygen. And at some point, he's going to stop coughing mm -hmm. and that's how you know that the, the airway is totally blocked. So as long as it's coughing, that means air is going in. But right. then it's going to start making some like gasping sounds, like you know, no sound. So if he so stops there and this one, right. look, now, Ms. now Richard is putting as long as it's coughing, all of that. There's no. air going in, so that's a good thing. Ah, but okay. um, I was just at saying some point, because if it is that he stops, coughing. right? Okay, okay, cool. Mm. So he's doing what we call the back blue, and hopefully the thing come out. Come but in this me. scenario, it doesn't come out. Uh -huh. And uh, then he locates the navel, the, or navel. the belly button, right. puts his hand above, uh, just above it, and then does what we call the abdominal thrust. So okay. again, um, hand position would be important, and the hand goes just above the navel. Mm -hmm. So you put your hand just above the belly button, and that cup that he made goes just above the finger mark, right. um, to the center of the of the abdomen and then he does abdominal thrust. Interesting. And that is actually going to do something just doing this? Actually, so he's doing it because he's simulating he's not doing right. it as okay. hard. Yeah. It's an okay. inward <laughs> upward thrust so, right. and then it's about five, five to ten thrust and hopefully that thing it should come out. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. It's certainly different from what I have been seeing on TV. <laughs> And um, I'm thinking that definitely what we have been, a lot of people see on TV and, and you know, well, of course, the University of YouTube, you assume that once it's on YouTube, then it has to be right. But definitely this is how it ought to be done. Is there anything that you want to say particularly about like choking and so forth? You mentioned a few beginning, right. you know, so like again, how to thin your food, simple things, right. but things that I believe that people tend to miss. So if you could just remind us about that, so we could just tie up this part and then we take another quick, um, no, we have to do the baby. Right. So how, what do we do? How can we relieve really right? And really. then I know for sure that we have to do, there's this interesting thing, what is interesting to me, to you it's just, uh, okay, um, recovery position I remember us talking about. Yes. So... Tell us about that, some things that we can do to possibly avoid choking in the first place, and then we'll do the baby. Right. So again, as you, you know, you teach in school, you, you, from growing up, you know, they'll tell you sit properly when you're eating, cut your, your do not talk while you're eating, mm -hmm. cut the food into small pieces to eat right. it, chew your food properly, um, no talking while you're eating, you know, mm -hmm. those kind of things. And um, be especially careful with children playing around small objects, and you know, because yes. things happen, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing is, again, it's about making the scene safe, having the equipment that you need to respond with, um, knowing what to do, because again, with this skill, it's a particular 
uh, placement of the hand. Yeah. Um, it's a particular place you're hitting on the back because you're not hitting the spinal cord. You're hitting on the shoulder blade, mm -hmm. between the shoulder blades, right. you know, things like that. Um, this, with this skill, it's a little less critical in the sense that if somebody's really trying to help, mm -hmm. they probably would, the, the, the pressure that they put to do the back slaps would cause the object to, to, be, come out, to right. be dislodged, okay. you know. Right. Um, but again, it's not as critical as, uh, let's say, CPR. Right. However, this person that was choking, mm -hmm. if, the, if they were not relieved and the object did not come out, it they'll collapse. And then mm. that changes back into CPR right. oh in, my that we, we showed earlier mm. on. Now, you see people, do because, um, and, and this one I'm thinking is particular because we're going to do baby or, you know, you see children doing this thing and they're going to have, they have an object and they, they throw it in the air or even food, popcorn or some sweet, you know, a, 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 um, yes. how you call it, Skittles yes. or one of the, and they want to see who they can, can catch, catch it in the mouth. And of course, you heave it up. And the mouth is open, and it goes down. Adults do it too. Yes, <laughs> you're right. Adults do it too. I don't know why else I did that. No, we're not saying that you should try. <laughs> Please don't. But yeah. it's definitely something that you want to be right. very careful. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And, and again, you have toddlers creeping around, button seeds on the ground. You know, yeah. things yeah. happen. Even buttons from the clothing, mm -hmm. um, things mm -hmm. in the crib. You know, and um, babies especially, they are helpless. Yes. So if they were um, in a, a situation, maybe clogs of milk, if the tea is not mixed properly. Really? Yes. Sure, so I never thought of that. But yeah, yeah. They could mm -hmm. be bits mm -hmm. in the porridge, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that could happen. Wow. So it's just about, you know, paying attention. Yes. Um, and when you see distress, to identify distress, so mm -hmm. you know that something's not right. Okay. Um, because a baby otherwise won't be making these kind of movements yeah, to tell to you or to that. scream. Right. Okay. So whereas a child might be coughing or moving around mm -hmm. in a particular way, a baby will just be lying there and struggling. Yeah, so it's yeah. always good to be observant. And because choking is a, a, a very regular phenomenon with babies and mm -hmm, toddlers, mm -hmm. we take the opportunity to demonstrate that okay, skill for you and audience. All well. right, so, so um, Richard is going to again. Again, uh, Richard is the right, lucky uh, so demonstrator <laughs> today. <laughs> All right, so we are so grateful for him. Come and, in yeah. and demonstrate what happens, what happens on the, on the okay. infants. Yes. And so in, in first aid, infants are considered, let's say, newborn to about one year old. Okay. And then you have children that are between, let's say, one and about puberty. Mm -hmm. And then above puberty, you have adults. So with, right. the, with the infant, you ensure that you do not block the, the mouth. And so, so he's made, putting his hand along the uh, chin bone. Mm -hmm. He's going to give baby five back slaps or back blows. Again, on the shoulder blade, avoiding mm -hmm. the, uh, back, the backbone. Right. Yeah. And he's now turning the baby over. Notice he's maneuvering this toddler, you know, nicely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on his on his arms. The head is always I lower. I think he has children. He has so many. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna interview <laughs> after the interview, you know. <laughs> but again, right. chest trust. He's just done five chest trust, mm -hmm. and he's turning the baby. You know, if there was something in the mouth. The way he turned the it baby over, it will it should have okay. come fall out. But we're assuming it didn't come out, so he's gonna do, do five again. back blows again on the on the other shoulder this time. Mm -hmm. And you continue doing that back and until forth, back and forth until is baby is is revived, is dislodged, or if the baby goes limp and unconscious, mm -hmm. then you have to change now into CPR for the baby. But quick question, one, I'm, I'm noticing that he's using just fingers for, yeah. for the baby, and that's deliberate? What, that's what a good why? observation and mm -hmm. that's deliberate. So remember I said you have to come to classes because yes. there's just different things we teach you. Um, when we're doing skills on adults and big children, we use uh, two hands. When we're doing it on smaller children, we use one hand. When we're doing it on babies, Maybe. we use two fingers. Ah, so again, okay, it's okay. variated to suit the size of the casualty that we're dealing with. Okay. And so it's important, and again, it's Compressive. one thing just looking, but mm -hmm. then you go to these classes, you sit in them for a couple of hours, you practice, practice, practice. Um, because it is only until you build that confidence that you're really going to do it if the need yeah. arises. Okay, okay, good. Hmm. How do you really know yes? Well, it's because with the person, a big, an, an adult or a bigger child, we know more than likely, well, the person feels better, they might say something. But right. as you mentioned, you know, with a baby, it's... Baby will it, cry. So baby will cry. Ah. And, and again, remember, this is a baby whose airway was obstructed. Yeah. And so with any human being, if you just get that release, you're going to be yeah, coughing out loud because okay. you'll be gasping for that breath of air that you just got back. You okay. know? Okay. So the baby's going to be frantic. 
-hmm. And then th that's other ways of knowing. Maybe it's frantic choking. Right. Goes limp, then you get into the CPR mode. Mm -hmm. And if something does happen and baby is revived, baby will cough again and move again. Okay. You know? And that's, that's what we want to hear. All right. We want to prevent it in the first place. But if but by if chance we, we didn't prevent it, it mm -hmm. then we want to be able to respond to make a difference. Okay. So. All right. So we have one more break. Um, go quickly, do what you have to do, and come back. You see how exciting the CPG hour is this Friday? And it's going to get better every second Friday. God's will for the next month, two, maybe three months or so. <laughs> I have the Grenada Red Cross. It's really exciting. And more than excited, I mean, I'm just like that. But the truth is, I'm just excited when I know that we can make a difference of this sort. And instead of just talking about something, we can actually have the tools to be able to equip us. That is, to me, what the, the real excitement is about. So let's take a quick break and we'll be back. When we come back, um, we will look at the recovery position and then we are going to also look just quickly at bandages. Um, just because we have that, that one, you can kind can you do that without a big set of training? Just basically, because right, I'm going to talk now, it through we'll again. And that. yes, Excellent. it can be done. <laughs> All right, great. So yes, let's certainly. take that break and we'll be right back. You are my strength. Get Vax, hey, hey, vaccinated. Get Vax, hey, hey, get vaccinated. Vaccinated. So wear your mask, up, wash your hands, up, and practice social distance. This is we chance to advance. Come, let me fight this COVID at once. So come on, let me fall in. is a message from the Grenada Red Cross and the Ministry of Health. very much for staying with us for this entire time. I mean, it's just been a really, really good experience. I've learned a lot, but I'm not going to do what you might be tempted to do. I am not going to be going and trying to practice on anybody at home. I plan to ensure that I sign into whatever class that the Red Cross has to offer because we will be talking about that just before we end the program. But right now, we are going to have um, the two demonstrators again, Richard and Donville. Donville, of course, I forgot the name. Richard and Donville, they are going to demonstrate the recovery position. So, just tell us quickly, when do you need that, what it's for, right. and then we can so, just have the demonstration. Yeah. So, again, in situations when there is not a lot of trauma, and when I say that, I mean there is no spinal injury, the mechanism of what has happened does not warrant any major critical intervention. So then mm -hmm. you have this casualty maybe who collapsed but they did not let's say hit their head or right. they're not bleeding profusely but there are times you have to leave them if you're there alone and you have to leave to let's say go for help or mm -hmm. they have recovered or they're vomiting. There are various right. times when this position becomes necessary. Okay. Um, the, the more trained you are however the book will tell you do not put them in that position just leave them lying flat mm -hmm. um, because you're able to respond at any point right. should they go right. limp again or, mm -hmm. or that kind of Thing. Mm -hmm. But with this position, we kind of use it when we have to settle persons into the position of comfort. Mm -hmm. If they're vomiting, if you have to leave for help, if you have to get up to get something else and you don't have right. enough time to help you, then oh, you know, okay. you kind of leave them. If they regain consciousness, they're not going to topple over, you know, that oh, kind of thing. Okay. okay, and the person, is it just for demonstration purposes or more than likely the person is going to be really flat on the ground? Um, in a lot flat of situations, down. chances are they're flat on the ground. If they're, let's say, as we say, they're twisted in any kind of situation because of the incident, mm -hmm. we're not going to do any it's kind of straightening down. back and putting okay. people into positions. Again, you might need special equipment to move people. Mm -hmm. You might need special equipment to cut things around people. So Those are peculiar times when this mm -hmm. cannot work. Okay, so this is kind of like the normal situation, more or less fainting minor injury. Fainting can be part of this too? Fainting, not the same. So with fainting, we, we lift the legs so that um, oxygen, <coughs> excuse me, can be 
improved oh, going okay. to the brain. Uh -huh. So this is the position right. that you put people in. If it's more or less, you want them, they're going to recover, they're vomiting, mm -hmm. you want them out the airway to keep clear, clear, you put them in the recovery okay. position. All yeah. right. So no spinal injury. Mm -hmm. We don't do this for people who have any kind of spinal injury. Okay, excellent. So, rescuer Richard on the scene on again. The scene again. So he's, he's, he's positioning the hand that's closer to him, so mm -hmm. that when he turns the casualty over, uh, he'll be have a na kind of natural prop. So, so this is the person, obviously feeling. So, so let's say it would have, would have been someone who had CPR min administered to them, and right. now clearly they're feeling much better, but obviously not able to get up and walk around and all of that as yet. And you have to leave them right. for Well, with that, CPR, that with CPR, uh, somebody's just recovering from CPR, you must go to the hospital. In, oh. in 9 out of 10 of these kind of scenarios, they must be seen by a doctor. Must go to hospital, oh. get checked out, make sure okay. that everything is okay. Because the mere fact that they had this kind of intervention right. done means that they need uh, additional care. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So this is really... Like so this is waiting for help to arrive, yeah. you know, kind yeah. of, and um, the person, as you said, might be vomiting, so you have to kind of put them in a way that the airway remains remain mm -hmm. clear. But it's kind of like the position of resting. If the person is unconscious, there are situations you could put the person in this position as well. They may regain consciousness because we'll also find out that when you have a casualty lying flat in the supine, as we say, the tongue goes back and blocks the airway. So that's ah. a natural lying right, position. Right, so right. you on your bed lying in your sleep and your mm -hmm. tongue could actually block your airway and choke yes, you. Definitely. So again, um, just you know, leaning, turning to the side could actually could move help. the tongue away from the airway and can just cause yeah. breathing to resume as well. Interesting. Okay, yeah. no. Well, all right. Thank you very much, um, Donville. I said it right? Yes. yes. Donville and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for that demonstration again, guys. Um, just for the last few minutes, I am, I am just amazed at how the hour flew by. I'm sure we have just a li little bit of time. But from the onset, we, st we were talking about, and you kept um, reminding us, and I was helping a lot too, saying, don't do these things just like that. Training, training, training. When, what does um, Red Cross do? Because I'm taking it that you have classes or so forth. Tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit about that, right? Right. So we do offer um, first aid training at the Grenada Red Cross Society. There's a number of things you can do to get uh, to join a class. Right. I must say that um, obviously you saw us using equipment. Mm -hmm. um, sanitization has to happen. The masks has to be bought. The gloves has to be bought. So there's some unavoidable costs. Yes. We also give a booklet in the class. We give an ID card when you finish if you pass. And when I say if you pass, you have to attend all the classes, you have to do all the skills. Mm -hmm. There are some classes we do an exam, so it depends on the level, there's wow. various levels. Okay. And so there's some unavoidable costs, mm -hmm. and um, so it's unfortunate. If we get sponsors, we'd love it, so right. that we can do this for free. Mm -hmm. um, but again, sometimes we engage unemployed, we have some first aid instructors who's unemployed, and that's right. a little means of income as well. Yeah, so we yeah. try to, to make the balance of paying somebody to teach these classes mm -hmm. while replacing the equipment, and most of these equipment come from overseas, so you have right. shipping and, and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so you, and classes can range anywhere from 80 EC to 150 EC, depends okay, on the level that you, that you right. want to be trained mm -hmm. in. So you're coming as groups? Certificates are good for two years, and mm -hmm. then we train small groups. So again, it doesn't make sense one person call to get trained, right? So what if I have a thousand dollars and I feel to come and just get my training because I can't wait Well then, we'd encourage you though, with a thousand dollars, we'd encourage you to bring along some friends and family and get <laughs> okay, trained. Because cool. that, that's too much money for one person. <laughs> yeah. um, but certainly, if there's any corporate citizens here yes. in this, sponsor a group in your church, sponsor a group in your community, mm -hmm. sponsor people from the football groups, the netball groups, the cricket club. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, drivers need to, to do this. Mm -hmm. Teachers need mm -hmm. to do this, everybody, Definitely. parents need to do yeah. this, um, because you never know when the skill is going to be required of you, and mm -hmm. you just hope that, um, you know, as a responder, I mean, I've been doing this for quite a bit of years, I've been able to give help in real emergencies, I've right. had testimonies of students that I've taught that have real testimonies of treating people for choking, treating people in CPR, mm -hmm. and so when you think of it, I could be the next victim on the ground. True. And um, nothing would be appraised me more than when I open my eyes, it'd be somebody I taught first aid who's just I know, right? did the skill on me and saved my life. Mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, so that's where the motivation comes from, but of course we encourage persons to get trained, yes. call the Red Cross, um, have a little patience with us too because a lot of this sometimes volunteers uh, the instructors as well, right, so we have to right. get the time, the place, the group, the mm -hmm, material mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we're trying, we're trying going forward to offer at least two classes per month where the okay. community can call in and do this. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. outside of that, if you have a small group, it's easier to put together the training right. than an individual who calls, you of know, course, spontaneously yes. and says, hey, I need to be trained. And then they're so, waiting on others to come. Right. So right. we put your name yes. on a list, we wait till that list gets to about eight names, mm -hmm. nine names, so and then we call a class. So bear with us with that, but um, of course training is ongoing and mm -hmm. um, as I said certification is good for two years right. and um, as you know the Red Cross is number one for providing first responder training. If you get trained uh, now when the hurricane happens, when the flood happens, when the accident happens, you could be on the scene in your community, you could yes. save a life before help arrives. Okay, alright great. So um, hmm, this has been a fact. Session. <laughs> no, and it really has brought a lot of, I mean, as I said before, it's just a lot of joy to be able to do this. It's wanting to come and talk, and that too is good. I'm not, you know, I mean, I talk for a living. <laughs> but it's just good to know that even with talking, we can really, you know, supply even more practical skills to, to really be able to assist. So, for those of you who um, stayed with us for the whole program, um, please, the Red Cross needs your money. And I'm not going to tell you how much money they need. And she, um, Samantha might not want to do the begging. That's cool. I am going to do the begging here. And I have no problem with all of that. No. No, seriously, though. We do need it because the more we can get your sponsorship, and it's not just, it doesn't mean that you have to take your whole salary to help. Come on. You can have five persons at the church. You can have five persons in your group. Whatever, where at your home, you could have maybe you have a big family, or you don't have a big family. Maybe it's you alone, but you have a you have a cousin and you have a whoever, and you really believe that this is something that you can you know benefit from, and you can and will benefit from it, I'm sure. And you can just say, hey, you know what? For the next two months, let's just put aside a fifty dollars each now, and then we come up to about a six hundred dollars, and let's call the Red Cross and say, here what? We have this amount. It's this amount of us. Can you see what you can work out for us to be able to have? such a program. Um, we are going to be with you, as I said, next month again, God's will. Our time is up. I did mention that we are going to do bandages, but our time is up. So we will be doing bandaging um, next month, God's will, and, and we will have a surprise for you, but I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> Samantha, any parting words? I really, really okay. have been very, very blessed right. by this program. I mean, may, maybe part, we could diverge part of the surprise. They need to watch the program and listen in because <laughs> yes. probably we have yes. a treat. Yes. Pay attention to be able to answer questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's tell us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, no but again, always in passing though, um, yes. to impress upon ourselves as relatives, loved ones, co-workers, friends, family, that first aid skills are skills for life and it's yes. about life saving um, and you never know you might just be the one to make a difference and what will you do when when that time comes all right okay so see that samantha want to help you all so much here what you can do just in case you missed the program last month you can just go back on the facebook page and so you'll be able to go back and see what was in the first aid kit and what we did <laughs> what we did today so you'll be very prepared for the surprise next month God's will. It has already been a pleasure. Thank you very, very much to all your volunteers, Samantha. Yes. Thank you so much to Donville and um, Richard. It really was a pleasure having them here and thank you for allowing us to be here at your space. Um, have yourself a really great rest of your day. An awesome weekend. Stay safe. Do what you have to do, especially with this season that we have just entered into. We know it's Christmas and there's a lot of stuff. Please, please, be careful, be careful, be careful. Be safe and God bless you. You are my strength. strength.